Hey guys, how's it going? So um, I just wanted to finish up this uh, series here. Uh, I've been a little busy, but um, now had some time. So just wanted to make this last video here um, over a small but pretty important uh, piece of Webpack, um, which we can really, which will really help us um, when we're developing. Um, so again, this basic setup we have here is is good, is a great um, development setup for most projects. And the last thing we really need that'll help us out a lot is the dev tools and what dev tools basically are are uh, source maps for webpack and um, the documentation is actually pretty good um, from webpack on this stuff so um, this is just going to be a short little video here uh, just walk you through um, why it's uh, good to have source maps when you're developing uh, and we'll just maybe talk about the little differences here so but i definitely encourage you to check these out on your own and try all the different settings out um, so why do we need source maps? Um, so basically imagine I have this piece of code here, right? And, you know, in a, in a real application, there'd be a lot more code, but I am console logging this, um, variable called foo here, but I don't declare it. Right. So obviously that's going to throw an error. So if I open up my console here, you'll see, we get this foo is not defined, right? Which is expected. So normally when you get an error, right. And you're developing and you open up your console, uh, Chrome is really nice. It gives you the the line number of your code in which uh, right where the error occurred, right? So let's click on this. But first of all, you notice right away, right? We get this app.bundle.js blah, blah, blah file name and line 7,548. Sounds a little fishy, especially considering my app.js file here is two lines long, right? So let's click this here. Okay, so it loads up here and you see, um, okay, I can kind of debug this, like this isn't that bad. Um, but Im again, imagine this is a much larger, more complex piece of code, right? It'd be a nightmare. First of all, I'm seeing the actual module itself, not just the code, but like the actual uh, code I wrote wrapped in a Webpack module, right? And then I'm seeing all this other Webpack like uh, garbage over here. And this is just the bundle itself. So first of all, I'm on line 7,000. It's crazy. I have all the other modules that I, I've written and then all this other stuff in here um, from uh, Webpack itself. So obviously this makes it much harder to debug. And then there's just the simple fact that, you know, the line numbers don't match up. And this is my uh, transformed code, right? This is the bundle itself, which is post, uh, in our case, we're using Babel, right? So post Babel transpilation. So you notice that this arrow function here, right? And this const declaration uh, gets, uh, you know, transpiled into a variable declaration and just a regular function expression. So let's use source maps to help make uh, debugging a little bit easier, right? So it's really easy. All we have to do is in our config file, just make a property called dev tool and you can set it to one of these options here okay so the first thing which was uh first what we were using was uh no dev tools which basically is the eval mode here right and you can see these different options all have trade-offs right so um obviously if webpack doesn't have to do any work in other words it shows you literally the generated code right from your bundle right obviously it's build speed and rebuilding speed is going to be pretty fast okay um, but you can see here, the, the more we get to our original code, the worse uh, our performance is as far as building bundles. And it just makes sense, right? Because every time you make a change, especially when you're building your first bundle, um, Webpack has to go through and make source maps for all of your code, right? So depending on, you know, the kind of project and your workflow, you may or may not want source maps. Um, if it's something, you know, you need done really fast, maybe you're working on CSS at, at a certain point on your project. So this is, this won't help you at all, but you know, it's, it's just something nice to be aware of. So, um, remember if we ever change our Webpack config, we need to restart. Okay, so let's, let's uh, now that I've enabled cheap eval source map, which is this one right here, let's check out what that does for us. So go back to my console and now you see, okay, instead of the bundle itself, I get app.js. So let's check that out. Still looks a little funky, but 
Okay, cool, much more manageable, right? So I still am looking at my transpiled code, right? I still get var a variable and a regular function here, but at least I'm not distracted by all this other Webpack stuff, right? Webpack does give us some helpful little uh, info down here, but that's about it, okay? So much better. Um, and you know, honestly, like if the, the rebuild speed's pretty good, so if this is good enough for you, um, maybe you're not um, doing a lot of heavy uh, transpilation. Um, this might work out just fine for you. Um, but say you're using React or something with JSX, you'll probably want to see the original source code, right? So what we can do is we can try something like, um, let's just go right down to a cheap module source map. Let's try that. Okay, again, we just paste it. And again, we have to restart. Cool. And we can refresh now. So let's go to our console again. Our foo error. Now it says app.js right here. Okay. So now you can see um, we're getting an error here. I don't know why we're getting an error on line one. That's a little strange. <laughs> but um, so basically now uh, you can see that we're looking at our origin, our original code, right? We're no longer seeing our transpiled version. So this makes um, you know debugging a lot easier for us, especially if you're using a library like React, where you're transpiling JSX and your code looks totally different, right? So this is pretty helpful. Um, I would suggest maybe using the uh, the eval source map, um, just because you'll get a little bit of speed increase there. Or if you really need to break down your code, you can always go for the hardcore source maps. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the main difference there. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Um, hope that was informative. Um, again, I encourage you to try out all the modes um, on your on your own time, um, just to check them out. And this file is pretty much you know all you really need for a basic setup. Um, and that's pretty much it for as far as development. So I'll be making a series uh, relatively soon, which will go over some more advanced stuff for Webpack. Um, because again, a lot of the performance gains you get from Webpack, not necessarily development things so much as they are, um, you know, things that you would worry about for production, such as chunking and splitting and, you know, uh, things we can do with CSS. So uh, this stuff is all fine and dandy for development, but um, we'll, in, in the next few videos that I'll be making, we'll check out and see what it can really do for us um, on the client side. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.